Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting to order, and Councillor Crick's going to say a short prayer before we get started. Lord, we thank you for this day that we can come here and uh, just enjoy the time in the MD of Bonneville. Thank you for also for the farmers getting their crops off, and if there's anyone that sells anything out there, I pray you'd help them to continue to get the last little bit off. Um, also ask, Lord, that you'd give us uh, wisdom today as we make decisions in this meeting and in the future. I pray your blessing and your protection on all of the staff and everyone that lives in this MD of Bonneville. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councillor Crick. Um, just wondering if there's any additions to the agenda. I see one here for sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reeve. Members of the Council, yes, administration will be recommending uh, two additions to the agenda. Under development application 7.3, development application number 2022-D-196, communication tower. And under 12.1, uh, uh, a CAO overview, uh, FOIP sections 21 and 24. What, what was that again, Al, sorry? Uh, FOIP sections 21 and 24 under CAO overview 12.1. All right, thank you. Any other additions to the agenda? Seeing none, I need a motion to accept the agenda. Thank you. Councillor Crick makes the motion to accept the agenda as amended. I'll call for the vote. Yes. Well, Ben, you didn't vote yet, I guess. No, it's it's good now. Yeah, carried. Thank you. Okay, I'm looking for the adoption of the minutes. Uh, regular meeting, September twenty eighth, two thousand twenty two. Yes, Deputy Reeve. I'll make a motion. Everything looks in order. Okay, thank you, Deputy Reeve, for making a motion on accepting the minutes from. September 28th, 2022. Any discussion on this? Seeing that, I'll, I'll, I'll call for the vote. <clears throat> Carried, thank you. I guess we're on to seven, seven point one, develop application. Hey, good morning. It's on. Good morning. Good morning. All right. This is development permit application 2022-D-195. The applicant is CNRL uh, Canadian Natural Resources and the owner is Crown Land. The applicant is applying for a 90-foot freestanding telecommunication tower. The property is located on the former ID uh, 349 lands south of Foster Creek Wolf Den Camp. Adjacent properties are Crown Land. The applicant would like to construct a 90-foot freestanding telecommunication tower for cellular, two-way, and Wi-Fi coverage. This is located at an existing well pad on the Cold Lake Air Weapons Range. This is authorized, this use is authorized to be applied for by the Alberta Energy Regulators under a MLS disposition held by CNRL. There are no towers or residences within 500 meters of the proposed location. The application satisfies the antenna system <laughs> siting policy 3A.009 as there are no dwellings within 100% of the tower height and it is on an agricultural parcel. Adjacent landowner letters were not sent out as there are no adjacent landowners. Recommendation for development application 2022-D-195 is approve the request for a 90-foot freestanding telecommunication tower as a discretionary use as per Part 6 of the General Regulations and Part 7, Section 69.2 of the Land Use Bylaw with the following conditions. Agricultural setback as per Section 69.6 of the Land Use Bylaw, 
the minimum setback shall be 38 meters from the front yard, six meters from the east, uh, from the sides and rear yard. The development shall comply with Can Health Canada's safety code six. Applicable electrical permits are required as per the Alberta Safety Codes Act. Compliance with all regulations of Innovation, Science and Economic Development Canada. Compliance with Transportation Canada and NAV Canada regulations. The tower shall be constructed in compliance with the National Building Code and the Canadian Standard Association and respect good engineering practices including structural adequacy. When communication towers and facilities become obsolete and or damaged and unrepaired, they shall be removed, immediately removed and the development site shall be reclaimed within six months of the cessation of operation at the expense of the tower owner. Thank you. Deputy Reeve, Fadev. Yeah, um, thanks for that. Uh, I'd like to um, go with the motion. Uh, option number one, the council approved this with uh, no additional conditions. Okay, thank you, Deputy Reeve uh, Fideo, for making a motion on behalf of council. The council approves development permit application number 2022D195 a uh, 90-foot freestanding telecommunications tower within Northwest 469-4th, west of the 4th M, as discretionary use pursuant to Part 6 of a general regulations and Part 7, Section 69.2 of the Land Use Bylaw for Canadian National Resource Limited. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. That's carried. Thank you. On to 7.2. This is development permit application 2022-D-198. The applicant and owner is Paul Husero. The applicant is applying for a renewal of a family care unit. The property is located northeast of Range Road 451 and Township 615. Adjacent properties are country residential and quarter section remnants. The applicant would like to renew a family care unit for his spouse's cousin, Lance Wright. An ATCO trailer is currently being used and was placed on the property prior to 2012. The applicant provided a note from Lance's primary care provider confirming a need to be in close proximity to family. The renewal was delayed due to family contemplating the living arrangements and care needs going forward and the time required to obtain a note from the primary care provider. Adjacent landowner letters were sent out on September 19th, 2022, and we received no concerns. Recommendation for development application 2022-D-198 is approve the request for a renewal of a family care unit located at Southwest 36615 West of the 4th mm -hmm. Meridium as a discretionary use pursuant to Part 6, Section 47 of the General Regulations and Part 7. Section 73.2 of the Land Use Bylaw with the following conditions. The expiry of this permit is to be December 31st, 2023. The permit is valid for the care of Lance Wright only. The unit shall be removed once it is no longer required. And we do have the applicant here if you have questions to direct to him. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. I'll move that we approve this. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Crick, for making a motion on behalf of Council that Council approves development permit application number 2022-D198 as a family care unit renewal within southwest of, uh, sorry, southwest of 3661-5 west of the 4th M as a discretionary use pursuant to Part 6, Section 47 of the General Regulations and Part 7, Section 73.2 of the Land Use bylaw for Paul Huzuru as per the rec recommendation presented. Any discussion on this? I sor sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong. I probably did. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried, thank you. On to eight subdivision. Oh, eight, eight, 7 oh sorry. 7 oh, yes. There it is, right on my sheet. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everybody. Go ahead. 
Okay, this is development permit 2022-D-196. The applicant is Canadian Natural Resources Limited. The owner is Crown Land. The applicant is applying for a 90-foot freestanding telecommunication tower. The property is located on the former ID 349 lines south of the Foster Creek Wolf Den Camp. Adjacent properties are Crown Land. The applicant would like to construct a 90-foot freestanding telecommunication tower for cellular, two-way, and Wi-Fi coverage. The location is an existing well pad on in the Cold Lake Air Weapons range. This, is, this use is authorized to be applied for by the Alberta Energy Regulator under a MLS disposition held by CNRL. There are no towers or residences within 500 meters of the proposed location and the tower, the application satisfies the antenna system siting policy 3A.009 as there are no dwellings within 100% of the tower height and it, it, it is on agricultural parcel. Adjacent landowner letters were not sent out as there are no adjacent landowners. Recommendation for development application 2022-D-196 is approve the request for a 90-foot freestanding telecommunication tower as a discretionary use as per part six of the general regulations and part seven, six, section 69.2 of the land use bylaw with the following conditions. As per section 69.6 of the land use bylaw, minimum setback shall be 38 meters from the center line of adjacent public roads, six meters from the side and rear yards. The development shall comply with Health Canada Safety Code 6. Applicable electrical permits are required as per Alberta Safety Codes Act. Compliance with all regulations of Innovation, Science and Economic Development Canada. Compliance with Transportation Canada and NAV Canada regulations. The shower, tower shall be constructed in compliance with the National Building Code and the Canadian Standard Association and respect good engineering practices including structural adequacy. When communication towers and facilities become obsolete and or damaged and unrepaired, they shall be immediately removed and the development site reclaimed within six months of cessation of operation at the expense of the tower owner. Okay, hey, thank you. Yep, Deputy Reed. Yeah, I'd just like to first of all, I'd like to make the motion to approve this. Uh, it's, it's exciting to see these uh, towers come up. That means, uh, you know, it's a positive growth in our area up there. And um, yeah, okay. I'd be happy to make this. Uh, thank you, Deputy Reed Fideo, for making a motion on behalf of Council that Council approves development permit application number 2022D196 as a 90 foot freestanding telecommunication tower within southwest of 969.4 west of the 4th M as discretionary use pursuant to Part 6 of General Regulations and Part 7, Section 69.2 of the Land Use Bylaw for Canada, Canadian National Resource Limited as per recommendation presented. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried, thank you. Thank you. Now we can move to 8.1. 8, 8 morning. morning. Subdivision application number 2022-S-012. The applicant proposes to subdivide one 16-acre parcel from a previously unsubdivided agricultural quarter section. The owners are Charles Moe and Kim, Kim Menzinger. The subject site is located on Highway 41, approximately a half mile south of Highway 28. Administration has received and uh, has sent notification of proposed subdivision to referral agencies and adjacent landowners with the deadline of September 26 to submit concerns to be considered at the October 12th council meeting. No concerns have been received regarding this application. The application does meet all conditions of the Municipal Government Act, subdivision and development regulations and the Lower Athabasca Regional Plan, Municipal Development Plan and the Land Use Bylaw and therefore we recommend it be approved as per conditions. I would like to uh, draw your attention to the handout that was presented um, earlier this morning. It does have an amendment to conditions. So condition number one is the legal and physical access to proposed parcels and remnant. And then number two is the amendment from Alberta Transportation to which 
pursuant to section 661 and 662 of the Municipal Government Act and section 6. Point, pardon me, 3.9 of the Municipal Development Plan that the owner developer dedicate a 30 meter wide service road right of way across the entire frontage of the proposed parcel along Highway 41 to be registered by plan of survey at no cost to Alberta Transportation. B, they construct a 30 meter wide service road across the frontage of the proposed parcel along Highway 41 so as to provide physical access to the remnant parcel and dedicate a 30 meter wide service road right of way across the north portion of the remnant parcel along the entire Highway 41 frontage. In this instance, Alberta Transportation is willing to accept the service road registration by caveat. There is an attached map at the back of your parcel from Alberta Transportation showing um, a, a picture depicting what their requirements are. Uh, condition number three is a real property report. Number four is sewer compliance with the Alberta Safety Codes Act and the Alberta Public Health Act and taxes to be paid in full. Thank you. That's 41 just heading into uh, Cahue and First Nations, correct? That's just yes, before. that's just south of That's where Moe's south Green of is. Intersection. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, just looking for a motion. I'm just curious what the purpose of that 30 meter, is that kind of a standard thing or what? The 30 meter yeah. access, Alberta Transportation will not give um, access to lands from the highway for other than agricultural use at this point and it's quite a extensive process to get that put into place so what happens at the time of subdivision they require the service road to be conducted across the entire frontage which would then allow access to any of the remnant portions the 30 meter dedication they're asking for that goes from the proposed parcel northward would be for future road widening mm. All right, well, I'll go ahead and make the motion then. What do they have to say about that? They, have no, they can say nothing about it. Yeah, they have the option to appeal the recommendation through the yeah. um, Land and Rights Tribunal if they so choose. Yes. So would, the, um, so would that 30 meter kind of be all along the road then? Or what? As it shows on the map. No, I mean like on, that, like on other people's parcels all the way down, or is that just on theirs? If subdivision happens on on any other pro, uh, property Same along thing. the highway it'll be taken at that time mm. that's typically what we've had um across other subdivisions as well just this one we've actually got a a photo from transportation depicting what they are requiring because there's definitely houses that are not even 30 meters away from the yeah that they were made years ago yeah okay just looking for a motion yeah RC, you yeah, made I made a motion. motion. Okay, sorry. Thank you, uh, Councillor Scarson. I'm making a motion on behalf of Council that Council approves subdivision application number 2022S012 to subdivide one 16 acre parcel from an agricultural quarter section northeast 167 west of the 4th M belonging to Charles Moe and Kim Mazinger as per conditions presented. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carrie, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, have a great day. Nine point two point one. Morning, Mr. Reed, members of council. Morning. <clears throat> On September 21st, 2022, the Director of Emergency Management presented draft bylaw number 1809, Emergency Management Bylaw, to the Committee of the Whole. The draft bylaw was discussed and no changes were, were recommended at that time. Administration is therefore requesting that bylaw 1809, Emergency Manage Bylaw, uh, excuse me, Emergency Management Bylaw be given first, second, and third reading by Council. All concerned parties, including the summer villages of Pelican Narrows and Bonneville Beach, and the village of Glendon agree with the contents of the, this proposed bylaw following the passing of this bylaw by the MD of Bonneville. The Alberta Emergency Management Agency will take a copy before the minister responsible for the Emergency Management Act and request a ministerial order which will formalize and make legal the relationship between the MD of Bonneville and the summer villages. 
Concerning the village of Glendon, once there's substantive bylaws in place detailing this arrangement, our relationship with them will be formal, formalized and legal according to the contents of both bylaws. Subject 20 changes recommended by Council, of course. There's a variety of documents attached. Um, development of the framework is largely completed. That said, training MD staff, exercising our program and procuring equipment and supplies to effectively deal with an emergency or a disaster will take funding over several years. Budget discussions are currently underway for fiscal 2023 and the appropriate funding will be requested. The recommended action is that bylaw uh, 1809, being a bylaw of the Municipal District of Volleyball 87, to establish an emergency advisory committee and regional emergency management agency be given first reading, that bylaw be given second and third reading, and that council adopt the emergency advisory committee terms of reference and emergency management agency terms of reference as presented. And furthermore, that council approves the emergency management partnership agreement with the village of Glendon and the borderlands emergency management mutual aid agreement as presented. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, thanks for the light reading material. <coughs> Not a loft twice last night to reading this. Just kidding. Uh, so into uh, so Appendix C. Just want to have an idea of, of how this is going to be run. So Appendix C, page two, under mem uh, under membership uh, one composition. Uh, in your, I guess, perfect world, would everybody have to be on there, or just certain parts? Uh, of the, I guess the uh, the committee or the the board sitting on this. Through the Reeve Council for Dave, I'm not sure I understand the question. When you say so, all everybody on there, everybody on that list would be a formalized member of the okay. committee. Yes. So uh, not excuse not me, just the, one of, but everybody on that list will be on. Correct. And sorry, we're talking about the agency, not the committee. Correct. So, yes, yeah. everybody that would be listed would be a formal member of that agency. Okay. Sounds good, thanks. Any other questions? Yeah, Councillor yeah, Crick. We talked about it at the Committee of the Whole and I guess I just wanted to say that I don't necessarily like the way that some of this stuff is, is wor worded. Um, it seems a little bit authoritarian and I understand that it's, it's coming down more from the provincial government and it's just m m something that we kind of have to do here. But I, I wish we had more thing instead of state of emergency and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of authority given to that committee in the agency, which I think it should be it, it borderlines uh, restricting people's free individual freedoms and potentially could be abused. So it's just uh, another I guess there's a couple of points. One would be that it's important that we have the right people in, in office and in government so that those authorities aren't abused as we've seen in the last couple of years with uh, the COVID restrictions. And yeah. More comment than anything. Thank you. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if there's a question. I don't think no, there's that a was more of a comment. A comment. Just uh, yeah. I realized it's something we kind of have to pass here because it's coming down from the province and but I, I can't pass it without expressing my opinion on it first. Thank you. Yeah, Deputy Reeve, for yeah, just one more question. Uh, so in regards to the training, uh, it says agency shall meet at least once a year. That's going to be in a formal setting, almost like a uh, uh, like something's going down. You guys would kind of go through a dry run with that? Yeah, so the, through the Reeve to Councillor Rufidea. So what happens with the agency is we, we meet, you know, technically as far as the province is concerned, we must meet once a year to, to meet the requirements of the local authority emergency management regulation. Um, I suggest we're probably going to meet a little bit more than that, certainly at the onset, uh, while we're building this, um, I guess, the foundation. So I would suggest to you that we'll probably have a couple of meetings with the agency and more than likely a couple of meetings with the committee in, yes. our, in our first year, uh, which would be 2023. Now there's really little point in getting rushing meetings through at the end of the year. It's a busy time for, for council as well. Yep. Um, so we probably end up doing that in 2024. And that is a legal requirement. We do have to meet at least once per year. But I think moving forward, just at, at the onset, we would likely amp that up a little bit just to make sure everybody's understanding. Ready for it. Is. That's right. Yeah. Correct. Awesome. Thanks very much.
Any, any other comments or discussion? I'll be looking for first reading then. I'll uh, come up with that motion then. Okay, thank you, uh, Deputy Reeve uh, Fideo, for making a motion. That bylaw number 1809 being a bylaw of the Minnesota, Minnesota District of Bonneville number 87 to establish an emergency advisory committee and regional emergency management agency to be given first reading. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried, thank you. Looking for a second reading. Sure. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Kraviak, for making a motion on behalf of Council that bylaw 1809 be given second reading. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried. I need someone to go to third. Yeah. Do we do we have to go to third right now? Isn't it kind of standard that we leave third reading for another day? Or it seems like we've been kind of bumping that procedure all along here the last while, just going straight to third. CEO. I think Mr. Members of Council, um, given that this has got to go to the Minister for Ministerial Order, um, uh, and unless Council is planning on not passing third, reason, uh, third reading, I would see no reason why, uh, although it is normal practice to hold off third reading, uh, this, is, uh, this has come to the Committee of the Whole, yep. um, and it's now at the Council, so it's had several views by Council. Thank you. Does that help? Okay, I'll make the motion for third reading, please. Going into Just third. to go into third? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Deputy Reeve Fideo, for making the motion. The council proceeds into third and final reading for bylaw number 18, 9, 1809. I'll call for the vote. Carried. Looking for third reading. Sure, I'll make that. Okay. Moved by. Sorry, moved by Deputy Reeve Fideev. On behalf of Council, that bylaw number 1809 be given third reading. Reading. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried. Thank you. Yes. Just, just have a read. question. So, uh, when, when is your, your work going to start? On I know you've been working on it for, for quite a while. So, uh, as far as you know, your deep dive, uh, is it going to be a four-month process, a six-month process for you? Through the reeve to Councilor for Day. So, the next process for us is to. We were hoping to exercise, um, conduct a bit of an exercise this year. Um, and then moving forward, we're going to be working on the actual plan. So appendixes within the plan on how to respond to certain events that are, are known. And then there's, there's a bit of a risk assessment, an environmental. And when I mean environmental, I don't mean climate. I mean what's in our area, what kind of environment are we in, what's our uh, standing timber, things like that, what's our flood patterns, things like that. So all that gets built into the plan, which we've already started to develop. And then the, the, uh, I guess the next, the next step after it's developed and maybe during that development process to actually exercise that plan and do a tabletop with it. Uh, prior to that, we would like to form the committee and the agency and actually have a meeting and, um, and then move forward. So there's, there's a bit of a, 
there's a bit of a process to it, but we're, we're fully engaged on it. We're moving forward quite rapidly. Now, this was sort of the main thing. Now that we've got the framework underway and we've got it stabilized that way, we can move forward with executing the development of the plan. Awesome. Thanks for the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Reed, we just have one more motion to adopt the terms of reference. That's correct. There and is, approve yep. the agreements. Thank you. I apologize. Looking for one more motion. I'll make the motion to adopt the terms of references. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Crick, for making a motion on behalf of Council that Council adopts Emergency Advisory Committee terms of reference and Emergency Management Agency terms of reference and. Presented and furthermore, the council approves the emergency management partnership agreement with the village of Glendon and the Borderlands Emergent Mansion mutual aid agreement as presented. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. <clears throat> Carried, thank you. So on to planning and community, community services, 9.3.1. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Good morning. So this morning I have a bylaw number 1804, which is the Ardmore Area Structure Plan bylaw. Administration has been working on a review and update of the Ardmore Area Structure Plan to ensure that the plan is consistent with the Municipal Government Act, current practices, municipal policies, and community aspirations. As all municipal ASPs are established through council bylaw, administration is proposing bylaw number 1804 for second and subsequent third reading, which will repeal and replace the previous bylaw 1301, which was passed in 2004. The review and update of the Ardmore ASP was initiated in March of 2021 with the assistance from the community <coughs> consulting firm, Urban Systems. On June 28, 2022, an in-person public engagement event was scheduled and completed. The amended Ardmore ASP reflects input from the community focused on the following themes. The first is strengthen the main street and look for opportunities to encourage more business opportunities. Second, to leverage and build on the community amenities and facilities. The third is to retain the small town feel while remaining open to growth and development opportunities that create a mix of uses and housing to support the sustainability of the community. Fourth, to maintain a focused vision when considering new growth and development opportunities. First reading was approved by Council on August 24th of 2022. A public hearing was held on September 14th of 2022 where parties present spoke to the proposed bylaw. The following changes have been made to the draft documents since first reading and as a result of the discussion from the public hearing. The first change was changing a small strip of lands on the west edge of the developed lots in the southeast of 2, 62 of 4, to reflect the current zoning of HR2 on the existing land use map. So that can be found on page 8 of the proposed ASP. The second was changing the future land use concept in figure 7, which can be found on page 20 of the ASP, of the lands west of 52nd Street in the southeast of 2, 62 of 4, of the SP from reserve to for future development, it has now been changed to residential. So administration recommend, administrative recommended action is that bylaw number 1804, being a bylaw of the Municipal District of Bonneville to adopt the Ardmore Area Structure Plan as amended, be given second reading, and furthermore, third reading. Thank you. Just look. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kraviak. I'm making a motion on behalf of Council that bylaw number 1804, being a bylaw of the Municipal District of Bonneville number 87, to adopt Ardmore area, area Structure Plan as amended and to be given second reading. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing that, I'll call for the vote. Carried, thank you. Looking for another motion, the third. I'll move yeah. to go into third reading. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Crick, for making a motion on behalf of Council that bylaw number 1804 be given third reading. Any discussion on this motion? 
Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. <clears throat> That's carried, thank you. On to 93.2. File on number 1805 is the Cherry Grove, Grove Area Structure Plan. Administration has been working on a review and update of the Cherry Grove Area Structure Plan to ensure the plan is consistent with the Municipal Government Act, current practices, municipal policies, and community aspirations. The review and update of the Cherry Grove ASP was initiated in March of 2021, also with the assistance from the community consulting firm, Urban Systems. On July 27, 2022, an in-person public engagement was scheduled and completed in Cherry Grove. The amended Cherry Grove ASP reflects input from the community focused on the following themes. One, maintain the rural and natural qualities of the community. Two, explore opportunities to accommodate businesses that support the growth of the community. Three, maintain housing options that provide opportunities for citizens to age in place. Four, continue to support the growth and expansion of community facilities that contribute to the sustainability of the hamlet. Five, leverage community facilities and natural areas to retain and build community events and activities. First reading was approved by council on August 24th of 2022. A public hearing was held on September 14th, 2022, where parties were present and spoke to the proposed bylaw. The following changes have been made to the draft document since first reading and the public hearing. The first change was removing the landfill or co and corresponding setbacks from figure five development constraints map. Um, it was our, we did believe that there was a landfill at one time. There was an approval done through Alberta, through AEP, but then the landfill was never constructed. So there is no constraints from that area. And an addition of the general policies to section 3.0 which can be found on page 19 of the proposed ASP, attached as Appendix A. These policies were a part of the document during the creation portion, but somehow got missed when revisions of the document were completed. These policies ensure higher order, po order policy documents, as well as provincial regulations are incorporated into the planning and development decisions. So administration is recommending that bylaw number 1805, being a bylaw of the Municipal District of Bonneville, to adopt the Cherry Grove Area Structure Plan as amended be given second reading and furthermore that it be given third reading. Thank you. Yeah, since I missed that uh, presentation on the Area Structure Plan for Cherry Grove, I'm gonna recuse myself from the vote. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're, yes. we're <laughs> taking her pretty slim here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to go to second reading. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Crick, for making a motion on behalf of Council that bylaw number 1805, being a bylaw of the Municipal District of Bonneville, number 87, to adopt the Cherry Grove Area Structure Plan as amended to be given second reading. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried, thank you. Looking for third reading. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Kraviak, for making a motion on behalf of Council that bylaw number 1805 be given third reading. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried, thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Welcome back. On to uh, 9.3.3. Morning. Good morning. I think, yes. <laughs> Could we bring up Appendix B, please? Good morning, Council. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, so today we're looking at the Aurora Borealis Estates Area Structure Plan. Uh, this covers the quarter section just north of the Bonneville Airport. And this bylaw, uh, which is here for first reading, is to appeal the previous Aurora Borealis Estates uh, Area Structure Plan bylaw, or bylaw number 1386, 
and to readopt it under bylaw 1811 with some minor text changes. Um, so these changes are to support the eventual subdivision of municipal land within the Bonnet Vale Airport area um, and allow access um, to the airport and the area just north of that. So starting under section 4.2, um, oh, thank you. So give me one second, sorry. So uh, starting under section 4.2, uh, you will see the text highlighted in red and crossed out. This text is to be removed. Uh, that limits the ability for access to the runway. Uh, this is being removed so that the municipal reserve, also referred to as the taxiway within the ASP, uh, may be used by planes and other necessary vehicles uh, to access the runway from the lands to the north. And scrolling down to uh, 5.41. So here again, uh, the text in red and crossed out is to be removed, while text in green is to be added. Uh, so uh, the text here limited the use of recreational area by prohibiting the movement of airplanes across uh, the recreational uh, designated areas. So you can see the wording in green is being added to allow the airplanes and necessary ve uh, vehicles for uh, to operate. Uh, and subsection E, in its entirety is being removed, uh, which only allowed aircrafts access to these areas once a detailed recreational plan was approved. Scrolling down here to 5.5 .5, under section or subsection A, sorry, uh, we can see the municipal reserve was uh, to be used for linear parks and pathways and were designated as recreational areas. Uh, this wording was changed to allow for roads to be placed on municipal reserve as is allowed under the Municipal Government Act and, uh, and to allow for uh, or to limit the use of those roads to airplanes and vehicles necessary to the operation and maintenance of the Bonneville Airport. And subsection B was removed as the statement that uh, limits the ability of the municipal district to uh, take environmental reserve. In future cases, it may be that the area structure uh, plan expands or the area expands or anything along those lines. Uh, and it's just a little bit of cleaning up here so that we still have the ability to take ER. And then finally, uh, subsection B, um, just noted that all linear parks will be developed with pathways and uh, minimum right-of-ways. This is again just to allow uh, those areas uh, that have been designated under the area structure plan to be used for roadways and not limited to only pathways uh, and linear parks. And that's all the changes that would be occurring. Uh, all of the reports and figures that were attached to the area structure plan previously are being carried forward. Uh, this is just for these minor changes that I've highlighted here. So if you have any questions at this time, I would be happy to answer them. Yes, Deputy Reefadev. Yeah, I'm glad this is coming forward. It's kind of been, you know, a, a park that was kind of made for that that it never could be that. So uh, mm -hmm. glad to see that. Uh, maybe this is a question either for yourself or the CEO Hogan. So in regards to the storm water ma management plan, with uh, the MRs going away, I'm sure that's all being looked at, and I'm sure we we have a pretty good plan moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, if I may. So it, it, it's not that the MR is going away. Uh, the, the MR is still there and designated. It's just that we'd be allowed to use it for roads, and then the drainage through the MR would still be uh, continued uh, through the ditching alongside those roads if implemented. Is there gonna be any kind of, I guess, uh, like realignment of any roads there or any plants, any drainage plants? There's a possibility on the very south end uh, within the Bonneville Airport area of a road being moved a few meters uh, north and connecting to some of the roads within the Aurora Borealis Estates area structure plan area. 
however, again, uh, the plan would be to have the drainage follow along within the ditch of that road as it's adjusted. Awesome. Good. Thank you. I just got a quick question. I thought when we first developed that, that was the idea of having hangers over there and the planes were, were going to taxi across. The, I, do you remember that, Mike, or is that? Yeah. Well, is there any hangers or anything out in that? There is, so we're not allowing those planes to come across anymore? Is that? Sorry? I think, think Mr. Members of the Council, uh, we have been because yes. our airplanes uh, 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 on the other side. There was some, uh, when, uh, when I arrived on scene last year and I went through the Aurora, uh, Aurora Borealis Area Structure Plan, I noticed that there was some restrictions in the, in the Area Structure Plan that actually did not allow for that, even though that I think that was the original intent of Council back in the day yeah. to allow that to happen. This is cleaning up those issues to now make it, um, to now make it uh, allowable to use those uh, areas that were considered recreation, which are actually the small taxiways that if that was ever be, to be developed, to allow aircraft to taxi out to the airport area specifically. Okay, just making sure that I know what I'm <laughs> agreeing to here. Good. Thank you. Any other questions, gentlemen? It looks good. All right. Yeah, I'll make the Mo motion number one then if you want. S sure. <clears throat> I almost said Deputy Reeve here. <laughs> he made enough motions today. So uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Crick, on making a motion on behalf of Council that bylaw number 1811, being a bylaw of the Minnesota District of Bonneville, number 87, to adopt the Aurora Burial, Boreala Estates Area Structure Plan to be given first reading. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing that, I'll call for the vote. Carried, thank you. Looking for another motion, please. Th thank you, Councillor Scarson, for making a motion on behalf of Council that Council approves December 14th, two uh, 2022, at 10 a.m. as the date and time for the bylaw number 1811 public hearing. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a five minute uh, break here, 10 minute break. Ronald McDonald House. Thank you. Deputy Reed Fideo. So today I want to present a request we received from the Ronald McDonald House Charities. Um, we've received a letter from them requesting sponsorship to assist with the cost for their upcoming 2023 Winterland Invitational local hockey tournament and fundraising event scheduled for February 17th and 19th next year. RMHC provides lodging for families with seriously, serious ill or injured children who must travel to receive medical care. There are currently four houses in Alberta in Calgary, Edmonton, Red Deer and Medicine Hat. This specific re request for sponsorship is in the amount of $8,000 as an ICE sponsor for their 2023 Winterland Invitational. This under 13 and under 11 hockey tournament brings approximately 36 teams and over 500 families to Cold Lake, Bonneville, Glendon and Elk Point during this time. The funds raised from this event are used to assist Lakeland area families with their stays at Ronald McDonald House. Other items of note, uh, the MD has previously sponsored this event in 2018 through to 2021. In 2021 and 2022, the event was changed to a virtual fundraising event only uh, due to pandemic restrictions. In 2022, upon receipt of the annual sponsorship request, Council directed administration to encourage them to apply for sponsorship through the newly created event and program uh, sponsorship level of the Community Action Grant. No application for this event was submitted, however, an application was later submitted and consequently approved to this grant program for sponsorship of their annual golf tournament this summer. Attached for Council's information is the request letter received from Ronald McDonald House. 
and reference to our strategic plan is uh, supporting this is in line with goal one, building a prosperous and sustainable community, and goal four, which is enhancing the livability of our community. Cost and source of funding, um, $8,000 to be funded from council's grants to individual and non-government organization, uh, your 2022 budget. Um, since uh, preparing this RFD two weeks ago, we have determined due to limitations on uh, how often you can apply to the community action grant, the second option of directing them to apply again is uh, not valid. So as far as the cost and source of funding, it would only be through, uh, should council approve this, through the grants to individual and non-government entities. So administration's recommended action is uh, actually number two, which is that council approves the request by Ronald McDonald House Charities for funding support of the 2023 Winterland Invitational in the amount of $8,000 to be funded from the 2022 operating budget. Thank you and good morning. I don't know if I say good morning, but good morning. <laughs> good morning. <clears throat> yeah, Councillor Craig. So the, the original recommendation was to uh, direct them to apply for the 5,000 through the community action grant program. But if I'm understanding correctly, you're saying that it's because they already got a grant for that for the golf tournament this year, they wouldn't be able to be eligible for that. that so is now, correct. now we're recommending that we give them 8,000 just as a council gift kind of thing. <laughs> through the REAP? Uh, yes. So the way that uh, with our new policies that are in place, if their request was $2,000 or less in sponsorship, we would process it through the sponsorship and uh, donations policy, which is approved through the CAO. Um, the second option, if they're requesting sponsorship up to $5,000 would go through the community action grant. We would support directing them to that. However, because they've already received um, that specific grant, I believe it was just over $3,000 for their golf tournament. Um, they no longer, if they apply through it again, we would have to decline it because you can only apply once per year. So uh, that is why uh, administration is recommending should we wish to continue to support this event specifically, it would need to be a council directed motion and come from council's allocation in the 2022 budget. Yes, Deputy Reed. So what is the total amount that we have given them uh, so far in regards to their first ask, the way we usually do annually, and then the, the another 5,000 for the golf? Are we at 30 now? Through the Reeve, I'm just pulling up that information. So I have access to uh, our givings through the grant policies, which currently this year was only $3,000. I don't have in front of me how much council approved, but there is an annual amount, I believe. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember that number off the top of my head. Okay. But it's in around that twenty or 25000 I believe. I don't think it was that high. I think what was, was you're saying is an annual amount that we give them just to give them? I don't think that's for the, the for the star. Uh, oh, this stars is stars, stars then, now we're talking about. So, uh, and then these guys are stars are not associated with these guys, right? Ronald that's McDonald's. what I'm getting confused of. Okay. Yeah, these are two different. This is Ronald McDonald House stars and stars. Yeah, they're, they're, I don't think they're together. Okay. Yeah, stars charges um, per person or whatever, right? Are we pay per person a dollar or two dollars or whatever it is? Yeah. Right. Through the Reeve, as far as I'm aware, all requests for sponsorship um, were the ones that were noted in the RFD. So uh, specifically to that, on top of our sponsorship requests, I don't have the information in front of me right now. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Hmm? Just looking for a motion. <coughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Kraviak, uh, for making a motion on behalf of Council. The Council approves the request by Ronald McDonald House Charities for funding support 
of the 2023 Winter Land Invitation Noel in the amount of 8,000 to be funded by the 2022 operating budget. Any discussion? Yes, Councillor Crick. Yeah, I guess I just we're trying to tighten up the budget around here, and if we're just approving eight thousand dollars, is, is that in the budget already? The operating budget, like coming from the operating budget, I'm not really seeing like a line item where where that fits in or. Through the Reeve uh, Council, at the beginning of the twenty two, as part of the twenty twenty two budget, had allocated, I believe it was two hundred thousand dollars associated with council givings. Uh, for the year at Council's discretion as requests come through um, to you. Right now, currently, I don't, um, the last time I looked at the balance, it was around, still remaining this year, around $50,000 approximately. So, so there is the money in the budget for, for this. Yeah, I don't think they'd be asking for it if they never had it in the budget, especially yeah. if they're saying they're taking it out of the budget here. Okay, yeah. thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. <clears throat> Carried, thank you. Thank you. 9.3.5. Administration has received a letter from the Bonneville Senior AA Hockey Club to announce, uh, sorry, the Bonneville Pontiac Society Senior AA Hockey Club to announce their 70th year span as a hockey club in Bonneville. The first game played by the Senior A AA team was on December 16, 1952. To commemorate this important milestone for the Bonneville Senior Pontiacs, they are requesting two items from the MD of Bonneville. One is to um, provide advertising sponsorship funding in the amount of $2,000 as well as attendance by the Reeve and Council as guests of the Pontiacs at the commemorative hockey game event to be held on December 16, 2022 against the Devon Barons at the Bonneville Centennial Centre. The Bonneville Senior Pontiacs Hockey Club is a member of the North Central Alberta Hockey League along with Devon, Lacombe, Fort Saskatchewan, Red Deer, Warrenville, Westlock and Camrose. Items of note for this request, uh, previous funding provided to the seniors Pontiacs include $400 in 2015 for hosting provincials and $500 in 2018 for their alumni night event sponsorship. Attached for Council's information is a copy of the letter and sponsorship information provided by the Bonneville Senior AA Pontiacs. Reference to our strategic plan is that is in line with Goal 3 of promoting community development. Regarding costs and source of funding, the cost of $2,000, which includes a full page ad in their program, which is distributed free to fans at every home game, as well as four season ticket packs. The source of funding for this request would be through the donations and sponsorship policy, as it is uh, $2,000, as it meets the policy's requirements. Administration's recommended action is that Council approves the request from the Bonneville Senior AA Pontiacs for a sponsorship in the amount of $2,000 to be funded from and through policy number 2A003, Donations, po Sponsorship and Recognitions Policy, as part of the 2022 operating budget. And furthermore, that Council approves attendance by members of Council to the Bonneville Senior AA Pontiac 70th Anniversary Commemorative Hockey Game to be held on December 16, 2022 at the Bonneville and District Centennial Center. Okay, thank you. Looking for a motion. Okay, yeah. Mr. Evan, uh, make a motion for option number one. Okay, thank you, Councillor Kraviak, for making a motion on behalf of Council that Council approves the request from the Bonneville Senior AA Pontiacs for sponsorship in the amount of 2000 to be funded from through policy number 2A003, donation sponsorships and recognition policy as part of the 2022 operating budget. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. That's carried, thank you. Looking for another motion. 
Yes. I'll make a motion to the Reva Tens, their charity game there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Scarson, on behalf of Council, that Council approves attending attendance by members of Council to the Bonneville Senior Aid AA Pontiac 70th Anniversary Commemorative Hockey Game to be held on December 16, 2022 at the Bonneville and District Centennial Center. Any discussion? Yes, Deputy Reeve, Fadev. So we're looking for, uh, for, for some people right now because there's four tickets. Or are we, are we going to do that later on? Um, uh, if council is comfortable delegating that right now, um, that would be great. If if not, we understand there's also two councillors absent, so if it'd be easier to do that after um, and confirm with either of them if they would like to attend, it's it's at your discretion. I think it's two good. separate events, right? I mean, the, the council come to the game, and then the four season tickets is for each game. Yeah, the t right. Yeah, tickets is for all games, right? So that can be given to staff or any, anybody, yeah. Correct? Uh, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. That's correct. Okay, and this is just uh, just to come to a, one special game, the 70th, correct? And the, and the read to say a few words. Okay. All right, it's, I don't see that in that motion anywhere. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, I can, sure. Yes, or to well, Councillor Scarson, I think he could. <laughs> Any other discussion on this motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried, thank you. Thank you. 9.3.6, thank you, Esther. <coughs> Morning, Moan. Morning, Mr. Reeve and Council. So this is the uh, Municipal Stimulus Program uh, grant change uh, update. So in September of 2020, the MD Bonneville applied for and was successfully awarded the Municipal Stimulus Program MSP grant for the revitalization of the Cold Lake MD Campground uh, Boat Launch and Mooring System. Uh, work was to be completed no later than December 31st, 2021, however, Following the design and engineering phase of the project, the project has since been delayed due to regulatory approvals and First Nations consultation. As such, an extension was granted by the Minister to December 31st, 2022. To date, regulatory approvals and First Nations consultation are still being processed and have not been finalized or approved. Should this process be finalized and approved, the construction window is now anticipated to be mid to late 2023. This anticipated timeline will not meet the grant project completion deadline of December 31st, 2022, whereafter any unused grant monies are to be returned to the province. An additional extension was requested, though this was denied. During this request, it was asked if this grant could be utilized towards the green chairlift replacement. The province confirmed that the green chairlift replacement is an eligible project. So to ensure that the grant funds are fully utilized, administration recommends swapping the NSP grant funds with the equivalent funds allocated already for the green chairlift replacement project, as this is slated to be completed before December 31st, 2022. Uh, this would fall within the strategic plan of goal three to promote community development. Uh, the costs and sources just a swap, it's a reciprocal transfer between uh, funding sources. And our recommendation is that council accepts the update of on the municipal stimulus program grant regarding the funds being utilized for the green chairlift replacement project instead of the Cold Lake MD campground boat launch and mooring system project as information. Thank you. Yes, uh, Deputy Reeve. So from what I understand, it's so the same, uh, I guess, the same ministry is that could approve it is also denying it. It kind of sounds weird, but I'm just trying to. Last night I was reading it and I'm like, okay, so they they could approve it because I think uh, due diligence has been done. It's been going on for two years now, uh, and uh, yeah, so there's no end to sight in regards to any of the consultations that you know of. Uh, through the reef, um, we actually have. Uh, and just finalizing a, a letter um, highlighting all the points um, from the consultation and then that would be submitted 
to the province and then after that um, they may give us approval and then following then that, that approval then the remaining regulatory approvals would be processed so um, it is it is close but the construction wouldn't we wouldn't for this grant it, it wouldn't uh, be done in time wow. so we wouldn't meet the criteria makes total sense might as well use the money so uh, I'll make the motion for uh, option number one then All right, thank you, Deputy Reed Fideo, for making a motion on behalf of Council. Uh, Council accepts the update on the Municipal Stimulus Program grant regarding the funds being utilized for the green chair lift replacement project instead of the Coal Lake MD campground boat launch and mooring system project as information. Any discussion? Yes, Councillor Scarson. So that, will that mean that will you be allocating the money that was used for the green chair lift over to the Coal Lake? Is that right then? That's yes. correct. It's, it's just a simple um, funding source swap. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. so does that need to be in the motion then? Or? We're, aren't we just adding to the green chair? We're not swapping money, are we? Uh, Mr. Reeve, members of council, yeah, the, uh, it, it's, um, funding of capital projects is solely the purview of uh, city council. So all this, the request is, is to take uh, the MSP money that we were about to lose at the end of December, move yep. it to the green chair, and then use the the same money that we would have used for the green chair that we could hang on to that and use that uh, later, so next early year. into the new year on on the on the uh, on the uh, cap site. So uh, we're just swapping yeah. Yeah. the same yeah. funds. Yeah, through the it's just, it's it, simply so we don't have to send that money back. It's it, yeah, I understand. I'm just saying, so. do you have to have that in motion that you're using the green chair of money to do the mooring system? Uh, I think it's just to receive his information um, okay. that that's what we're gonna proceed with I just didn't know if you'd be coming back for money to for the campgrounds no nope. right okay any other yeah counselor no nope. we're good all right then I'll call for the vote <clears throat> carried thank you on to 9.3.7 So this is uh, for the Kinsu equipment purchase. So through the 2022 capital budget, council has already approved the purchase of a replacement snow groomer and compact tractor for use at Kinsu Ridge. Um, a request for proposal was posted for the snow groomer with two proposals being submitted. After reviewing and evaluating the proposals, it was determined the groomer that met the requirements of the RFP and Kinsu operations as well as being the lowest price was Piston Bully at $366,109 with a trade-in. A request for pricing were also put out for the replacement of a compact tractor to three local dealers. Upon reviewing the quotes, only one falls within budget and still meets the needs of the Kinesu operations. The dealer is also willing to hold their price as quoted for a Massey Ferguson compact tractor for the limited time. Uh, the proposals received for both pieces of equipment were as follows for the snow groomer. Uh, the piston bully again is 366,000 and the uh, print off was the other um, groomer at 402,950. Uh, for the compact tractors, uh, the Massey Ferguson came in at, at our budget limit to 60. Uh, John Deere was at 70,698 and uh, Coyote was at $69,963. Um, uh, this is uh, included in uh, the approved capital budgets and administration is recommending that council approves the purchase of a piston bully snow groomer from Oak Creek Golf and Turf Inc. in the amount of $366,109 after trade-in to be funded from the 2022 capital budget. And that council approves the purchase of a Massey Ferguson compact tractor from Coet and Sons Implements Limited in the amount of 60,000 to be funded from the 2022 capital budget. Thank you. Looking on uh, motion on number one. Yeah. yeah, I'll make the motion for number one. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Scarson, uh, for making a motion on behalf of Council. That Council approves the purchase of a 
Piston Bully Snow Groomer from Oak Creek Golf and Turf Incorporated in the amount of 366109 after trade-in to be funded by the 2022 capital budget. Any discussion on this motion? Yes, Deputy Reeve. Yeah, I'm glad it's called Piston Bully, not Piston Broke. Yeah. Then be a, <laughs> There's an old joke yes, like that. Uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Um, I, are they gonna? When, when is there a supply time to any of these? Like they have to produce a, a machine by a certain time? Uh, yes, through the reef. So uh, they have said that they would be able to deliver this uh, before the end of the year. Um, both manufacturers were able to give us those kind of timelines. So okay, um, so we had those on the in yeah the package. They, they, they have to deliver yeah. by a certain time. Yeah, we had been in discussion with them um, throughout the year, and so they kind of had. Um, an idea that we may be interested, so um, it worked out well that they weren't sold out because, yeah, the, the lead time is um, a year to 18 months uh, if they hadn't have done that. So it's kind of kind of nice, both of them. But, okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. <coughs> Carried. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Even Council. We have one more, I think. Okay. Anyone want to make another motion for the tractor? Or did we make them all at once? Yeah, it was two together. It was two together? Okay. Uh, Mr. Eve, my apologies, that was not clear. The, the vote we, we put through was only for the snow groomer. There's still what? I apologize. What? Um, the, the vote that we cast was only for the snow groomer. Yeah, and we're going with the tractor now, correct? Correct. Yes. We need but option one said to include both, right? But we didn't do that? Um, yeah, sorry. For the miscommunication, the recommended action had two separate motions on it. Um, so we broke them out ourselves as well. We weren't, we didn't, we misunderstood on our end. So we only did the one vote, the one so you're looking for another motion? Okay, Mr. Yes, the other okay, thank motion. You. Thank you, Councillor uh, Kraviak, for making a motion on behalf of Council that Council approves the purchase of a Massey Ferguson compact tractor from Coet & Sons Implement Limited in the amount of $60,000 to be funded by the 2022 capital budget. Any discussion? All right, I'll call for the vote. Carried. Yeah, and sorry for the confusion, everybody. Um, I guess we're on to 9.4. 9.41. Um, good morning. morning. This is uh, bylaw 1808, amending boards and committees bylaw. Administration is proposing amendments to bylaw 1748 establishing boards and committees in the MD of Bonneville to replace the previous terms of reference for the Committee of the Whole, as well as address advertising requirements for open member at large positions and term conditions for those member at large appointments. Bylaw 1748 was passed in February of 2002 and administration had previously received direction from council to amend municipal legislation as required to establish a requirement to advertise all open at member, member at large positions, as well as clarify the term conditions for member at large appointments. So the proposed amendments that were brought forward um, are the addition of subsection 7.7, .7, indicating the requirement to advertise open positions, even if the current member is eligible and interested for reappointment. The addition under subsection 8.7, establishing a maximum term appointment of four years unless otherwise provided for in the terms of reference for that board or committee. And then also replacing the current committee of the whole terms of reference with the revised version which was adopted by council back in May. The committee of the whole reviewed this amending bylaw on September 21st and are recommending that council give past the bylaw as presented. Attached for council's review is uh, bylaw number 1808, the amending bylaw as Appendix A, and the original bylaw 1748 as Appendix B. 
Our recommended action is that the bylaw receive all three readings today, only to have it in place in time for the organizational meeting at the end of the month. Okay, thank you. Looking for first reading then? Yeah, I'll do first reading. All right, thank you, Councillor Crick, for making a motion on behalf of Council that bylaw number 1808, being a bylaw of the Municipal District of Bylaw number 87, to amend bylaw number. 1748 establishing the boards and committees for the municipality to be given first reading any discussion oh yes go ahead. Uh, it says the quorum is five members why five not four for committee of the whole yeah um that was what was discussed and decided upon at that time if you would like to make an amendment we can bring back the terms of reference i'm just wondering i don't remember i don't recall that but do you guys want to leave it at five or? It's because if it's, if there's anything less than five, it's committee of the part. Well, you're voting, right? <laughs> Three to two or two, two. It has to be five, doesn't it? Uh, no, 50% no, plus one. So four oh, yeah. would be quorum. Like for, for regular meetings of council, uh, quorum is four. Right. Um, but it's always been five. That's not a change we made in this, in that recent update to the terms of reference. So. If Council wishes to make that change. We can definitely take do that. And See, Mister, if it's like council, if you have four members in council, you have quorum. Yes. So why would the committee of the whole have five? That's my question. That's a good question. Um, yeah, yep. I, I can't speak to that. I think um, we should, Councilor. Yeah, I think we should leave it at five. And I guess the committee of the whole are kind of trying to discuss stuff in depth. And if we only have part of council here, like four out of the seven, then we're not going to get that in-depth discussion that we should have otherwise. Well, what about council? You have four, you have you have quorum. So, Mr. CEO, what, what's uh, what's your thoughts? Well, thank you, Mr. Members, Council to uh, Council Kriviak. I guess we didn't change that. That was the carryover from uh, from older bylaw. Uh, I would suggest that uh, that quorum be the same for either committee of the whole and for council. So either council moves to five or committee of the whole moves to four. I think we have an inconsistency, which I think will probably cause confusion one day as to we have quorum or not, because uh, here today it would be four, but committee of the whole would be five. So I would suggest, uh, um, and I, I think there's an argument to be made either way, whether it's five or four, I would just suggest consistency between the two. No, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I just, like today, we were pretty close not to being there. So, if, but we, this is a regular meeting, but if it would have been a different meeting, we wouldn't have had it. Yeah, but you still would have had four people. Yeah. If one more was absent, you still would have been okay. Yeah. So well, I'll make a, I'd like to make an amendment to say quorum of the committee is uh, four members. I somehow missed that last time. I didn't yeah. somehow. So, and then make a motion to uh, 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 approve this uh, with the uh, amendment. Amendment of four members. Um, Mr. Reeve, if I may, because the terms of reference are adopted separate from the passing of the bylaw, um, what we can do is either pass it now as is and bring back a new terms of reference in the next month or so with that change and then have it reincorporated into the bylaw once council has approved it. Or um, we cannot, um, we can amend this bylaw by removing the, the revised terms of reference with the amendment altogether. Could. Yeah, um, we could also table it. I think that'd be the easiest is just to table it. The the um, the preference was to have this in place for the organizational meeting, but it's not it's not mandatory. It won't negatively impact any of the appointments for for this upcoming well, organizational. Yeah, meeting. well, maybe let's just pass it then and as is, and then we can she can they can bring it back later, and then we'll change that to make it make it four and both. How do you guys? It's a good idea. All right, we'll just we'll we'll stay the status quo then. Okay. okay. We have a we have a motion on the table. Any other discussion? That was a good discussion though. Thanks for bringing that up, uh, Councillor uh, Kriviak. Uh, seeing none, we'll call for the vote. So, uh, Mr. Reeve, you're bringing that back uh, next month or or when? I can bring in amended terms of reference to the next meeting. Oh, next meeting. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Carried. Looking for second reading. Yep. Councillor Kraviak. Thank you, Councillor Kraviak, for making a motion on behalf of Council that bylaw number 1808 be given second reading. 
Any discussion? Seeing none, call for the vote. Carried. Looking to go to third. Permission to go to third? Yeah, Deputy Reeve Fideev. Thank you, Deputy Fideev. Uh, that council proceeds to third and final reading for bylaw number 1808. I'll call for the vote. Carried. Looking for third and final reading. Councillor Scarson. Thank you, Councillor Scarson, for making a motion on behalf of Council that bylaw number 18 void be give, given third reading. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried. Thank you. Thank you. 9.4.2. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reeve, members of the council. Uh, this is regarding the chief elected official title review. Administration has prepared a report for council's considera consideration regarding the title of the municipal district of Bonneville's chief elected official, which is currently established as Reeve. Section 155 of the MGA allows the municipality to give their CEO a different title appropriate to the office used. The, com the, uh, the Committee of the Whole reviewed this report on September 21st, 2022 and tabled the discussion to the October 12, 2022 regular meeting of council. The MD CEO has always, always had the title of Reeve going back to the first set of meeting minutes back in 1955. However, administration not able to locate any historical documentation specifying the designation of the Reeve. Of the 69 rural municipalities throughout the province, 57 use the title of Reeve, while the remaining 12 use the title of his or her worship and the mayor. The primary difference in the use of either title is the method of appointment for the chief elected official. Most municipalities that use the title of mayor appoint the CEO directly through the general election, whereas most municipalities that use the title of Reeve go through the process of council electing one of the councillors to act as the CEO for a specific term, typically a year, at the annual organizational meeting. Since the MD of Bonneville CEO is elected directly through the general election, administration is proposing to change the title from Reeve to mayor to align our customs with the common practice. If direction was given to proceed with this change, a council resolution would confirm the change and the new title would be specified within the MD procedural bylaw through an amendment. Um, there are a minimal costs associated with this. We're uh, estimating under $500. It's essentially business cards and, and a few print material. And our recommended action is that council approves change in the title for the chief elected official for the municipal district of Bonneville number 87 for me, from Reeve to mayor and effective uh, at council's discretion. Thank you. Any discussion or a motion? Yeah, Deputy Reeve, if it is. Yeah, I, I like to change. It's a positive uh, move going forward. Uh, it's more recognizable in the grander uh, scheme of things. Uh, we also heard that, you know, people were looking for, uh, you know, who the Reeve was in the past and they didn't know who that was and you know, they thought you were the mayor. Uh, I think it's, especially for, for economic development, it's pretty good. Uh, right now we're seeing there's uh, all the elected, general election, uh, general elected are mayors, and there's 12, and then there's four, including us, that are, that are still Reeve. I think it's a positive move going forward. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, Mr. Reeve, uh, to Councillor Fideo, some of those who are mayor are hamlets like Lac La Biche, for example, are rural and urban combined. So it's not just uh, rural. Strathcona County as well, they have the rural and urban combined, so they have a mayor. So, yeah. Yeah, and then, I mean, uh, you know, there's other ones like Yellowhead that's not, uh, you're also looking at Rocky View that's not, Leduc that's not. So there's a lot of ones as well. So, but I, yeah. Councillor Crick or Councillor Scarson? Well, I, I, I don't, um, you know, I prefer Reeve, probably. Uh, I could get behind Mayor. I just, I'm curious as to how many times I would have to listen to someone call you his worship, though. Is that <laughs> like an official title that goes along with Mayor or? It's <laughs> a good question, actually. 
Is that a question for our Yeah, CA, that's for uh, C, Mr. C, Hogan, C, for C. sure. He might know best. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reeve and members of council. So the title, His or Her Worship, is, uh, is just an honorary uh, title given to, uh, to mayors. Uh, you may see some people attending uh, uh, cities or, or towns with the mayor that uh, sometimes from the podium they would be addressed as uh, your worship. Uh, it's just an honorary title. Um, it, it's, uh, um, if, if it's a cause of concern, we certainly could eliminate it from our vernacular, but it, it's just a customary term uh, used for, uh, for somebody holding the mayor's title. So, Mr. Reeve, uh, the Reeve cannot be called His Worship? I've heard a Reeve being called His Worship. Uh, thank you, uh, through the Reeve to Council Kreviak. I've never heard of it. Um, oh. I've, I'm not aware of any municipalities that use that term. Uh, I'm specifically uh, um, with the Reeve. I've, I've heard it used many times with, uh, with the mayor, but not with the Reeve. Um, I suppose it is possible. Uh, they are essentially the same position. So any, uh, any, uh, any customary uh, titles that would go with the, the position. Um, I think it makes some sense that a reeve could also be called his or her worship, but it, it's it's not common practice. So I just I guess I'm curious, uh, Mr. Hogan, as to what you would direct your staff to refer to uh, the mayor as. Uh, given that it's a um, through the chair to Councillor Carson, given that it's a title that's cu that's customary with with the um, uh, with the position. It would not bother me if, if uh, staff uh, at the podium um, uh, uh, designated it as his worship uh, um, or Mr. Mayor. Uh, it, it, I, it wouldn't matter to me either way. I think the uh, I think the uh, um, I think the key is is that particularly as we move into economic development, that there are there is much confusion in the business world as to what a reeve is, but everybody knows what a mayor is. So if we were to go to an economic development forum or, or um, uh, Reef Kalinske were to go to a trade show or a symposium and was introducing himself as Mayor Kalinske, I think many in the business community automatically understand what that is. Many don't understand what it would be if it was Reef. Um, I will say that that's better than what it is on the East Coast where it's Warden. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, but uh, I, I just think there are, there are some significant advantages, particularly as we move into potentially into rebranding next year. And of course, as we as we start getting fairly aggressive in our economic development, that uh, a, a modernized title for the chief elected official is probably um, is, is probably a worthwhile discussion. Yeah, but Mr. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Councillor Scarson, then Councillor Cravia. Yeah, I was just going to say that, um, like I said, I can get behind Mayor. I think it might go along better with a, a complete rebrand if that's the direction we're going to go. Um, but I'll just be honest, if I would just, it would just seem strange to hear his worship in here over and over and over. So that's just my opinion. Yeah, well, if we do change to mayor, I don't expect anybody to call me worship uh, whatsoever. Mayor Kalinske would be fine if that's the way we go. Worship is, that's not, nobody needs to worship me as a, a mayor. Uh, I, I guess... Uh, you know that's the way they say it sometimes, but I won't expect anybody to be calling me worship uh, ever. Yeah, Mr. Reeve, maybe your wife might want to uh, call you uh, your worship. Yeah, I don't know about that either. <laughs> I don't know. There are Mr. Reeve, uh, 57 uh, MDs and counties that have Reeve, so uh, I'm not sure. I like the title of Reeve, but that's I can go either way. I guess uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's a tough decision to make, and uh, I know we ha we don't have two guys here again today, so it's a, that's a tough thing. Yes, uh, go ahead. I know you had some, you know, some conversations with uh, Councillor Slipchuk in regards to that. Yes. Was it positive uh, for that or not? Uh, he had the same comment as uh, Councillor Scarson. Uh, I don't think I talked to Dana about it, but he said if we're planning to rebrand eventually, he would like to see us go into mayor as well. Any other discussion? I know just on a note that I was to two main conferences and uh, the one, you know, everybody know, knows what a Reeve is, but when you're, when you went to the conference in Regina, nobody knows what a Reeve is, they, they really don't. And then you get associated with a, a 
in a in a setting like that you get associated associated with the town more than you do with your own MD uh, at that you know everybody thought we were part of the town and that it was there was confusion there but uh, you know but when you're at a you know when you're at our RMA uh, everybody knows what a reeve is right it's, there's no confusion there Well, deep thoughts. Uh, let's go with, uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we, uh, option number one, and uh, this is effective, I don't know, that's the beginning of the year. Organizational meeting? Organizational, Organizational meeting? Be nice, sure. You guys want to add, add that to your? And Mr. Eve, members of council, I would add that uh, um, Mayor Gondek, the city of Calgary, uh, not very long ago, just after the election of last year, she did make a request that she was not uh, addressed as your worship. So now addressing Mayor Gondek in the city of Calgary is just Mayor Gondek. Nice. Yes, go ahead, Councillor. Any, yeah. sorry, we're gonna just. I guess I can go either way on, on this, uh, Mayor Reeve. I'm not sure if I support the, it's a bigger expense. We decided to go with complete rebanding that's been mentioned here. I'm not sure if I think that's necessary. Um, but what is your personal thought on, would, would you, do you want it to be Mayor or Reeve or? Uh, you know, I, I thought about it quite a bit and um, to me, if I stay Reeve, I'll be happy. If I become a mayor, I'll, it'll be no, it's, it's just a, it's just a title. But the worship part, I definitely do not want to be called worship because I don't have that. I, I, I'm not, I don't think anybody should be called worship. I guess it's like like uh, Mr. Hogan said, it's just a, what it's been over the years, but uh, I, I'm, not that, I'm not that up there to be called worship. I called the mayor of Coal Lake Worship this morning and he, uh, over the phone, and he's like, no, it's just Mr. Copeland or Craig. So uh, he, 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 I think he has a problem with it, but I'm sure in a setting, uh, if someone, uh, you know, they start the meeting off and you're somewhere and they, you know, it's just a, a sign of respect, I guess, or, you know, I, I don't know, but uh, nobody here has to, if it, if it does change to mayor, I, I, don't, I do not want the title as worship or anything. Mr. Mayor, um, that's about it. Yes, Councillor Scarson. Yeah, so I just, um you know, I think that our rebrand, and it's part of our strategy, I guess, but um, I would definitely like to hear what that looks like because there is a lot of uh, confusion with us in the town of Bonneville, for sure. I know that, um, you know, outside of these borders. Uh, so I definitely reached in something like that, and I think that uh, that would be the more appropriate time to kind of change everything over uh, to mayor as well. So I just, it, I think it would just be easier or cleaner that way, but... Like I said, we'll see how the vote goes. So. Yeah, I'm all for rebranding as well. I just, you know, we do get confused with the town of Bonneville. Not that that's a bad thing, but when you're in a thing, it, you know, it's very confusing for other people. Uh, and then uh, to be called the municipal district of Bonneville, it, it confuses, like, even all the people. Like, we have ID 349, it's bigger. We have the people to the east, west, north, south. Then it'll be, hey, I'm from this one area. It has nothing to do with any town or city or village. Kind of thing uh, we're we're what we are and that's i think that's the way we should go mm -hmm. and we talked about this years ago and i know uh, my reeve at the time he always wanted to become mayor for for this reason he he talked about us many times yeah, yeah because he he went to a lot of events and the more events you go to you realize that it's probably the the better way to go but um you know if i'll, I'll, I'll whatever council decides that's the way i'll go I'll be happy, happy to be a mayor, and I'm happy to be the reef. It's just a title at the end of the day. Any other discussion? All right, we ha I don't think we have the motion yet. Uh, I thank you, Deputy Reeve uh, Fideu, uh, for making a motion on behalf of council that council approve changing the title of chief elected official for the municipal district of Bonneville from Reeve to mayor, effective on. October 26, 2022. Any other final thoughts? I just wish the other two guys are here, but they're not. Okay, I'll call for the vote.
This motion is defeated. On to 9.4.3. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reed, members of Council. Uh, this is regarding the Atoma Consulting Indigenous Protected and Conservation Area IPCA presentation of several weeks ago. Mr. Daryl Toma with Toma Consulting and Carrie Selin with Solstice Environmental Management attended the September 28, 2022 regular meeting of Council virtually to present Council with information regarding an engagement project for a new Indigenous Protected and Conservation Area IPCA in Northeast Alberta, specifically in the Wolf Lake Country. The presentation led by Toma Consulting was missing many details on how the potential creation of this IPCA around Wolf Lake would impact the MD of Bonneville. Questions still remain regarding control of assessment, control of land use planning and other matters relating to MD autonomy. Future use of the land in question by residents is also a matter of concern. Reeve Kalinske and myself met with MLA Hansen October 9th to confirm provincial, uh, con provincial involvement in the IPCA and to express the MD's concern. I'll let the re speak uh, uh, to Council to, uh, regarding that meeting. Our recommended action is that Council opposes the development of the new Indigenous Protected and Conservation Area IPCA until such time as clarity is provided regarding assessment control, land use planning, the MD of Bonneville's autonomy on lands inside the municipality's jurisdictional boundaries, and continued future resident use of the lands in question. And furthermore, that Council would direct administration to prayer draft letter to the Alberta Premier the Minister of Environment and Parks, the Minister of Municipal Affairs, the Minister and the Minister of, Minis of Indigenous Relations. Um, um, that letter to come from the Reeve outline and the municipality's concerns regarding the matter. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Yes, Councillor Crick. Yeah, I think it's very, very important that we oppose this for the time being until there's clarity like our CEO just outlined and I'll make motion number one as he read it there. Okay, thank you, Councillor Crick, for making a motion on behalf of Council. The Council opposes the development of the new Indigenous protect, Protected, sorry, my screen went down, Protected and Conservation Area IPCA until such time as clarity is provided regarding assessment control, land use planning control, the MD of Bonneville's autonomy on lands inside the municipality's jurisdictional boundaries and continue further resident use of the lands in question and furthermore the council directs administration to prepare a draft letter to the alberta premier the minister of environment and parks the minister of municipal affairs and the minister of indigenous relationships from the reeve outlining the municipality's concerns regarding the matter any discussion on this motion yes deputy reeve fadev yeah there's a also a few you know for you to stakeholders that were not engaged on it so just yeah just it's very confusing and uh, some clear direction will be good so i just thought i'd mention that yes yes go Mr. Ahead. yeah there's also not enough information to support this at this time so i'm not going to i'm going to support the uh, number one myself any other discussion Right, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Carried. Thank you. 9.5. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reed, members of the council. Uh, this is regarding a an invitation. Um, the Cold Lake Snowmobile Club uh, Sleds and Threads event, November 12th, 2022. Uh, the Cold Lake Snowmobile Club is hosting a Sleds and Thread event, which consists of cocktails, a primary dinner, an auction and dance at the Cold Lake Agripex, starting at 6 p.m. on November 12th, 2022. The, uh, the Cold Lake Snowmobile Club is a nonprofit volunteer organization which operates within the MD of Bonneville in the city of Cold Lake, and they maintain various trail systems, equipment, and a building which provide groomed trail uh, system and facility for snowmobilers in the area. Tickets are 75 each or 600 for a table of eight. Um, administration's uh, recommended actions that council approved attendance to the Cold Lake uh, Snowmobile Club Sleds and Threads event on November 12, 2022, and to be attended by uh, persons of council's discretion uh, at a cost to be determined depending on who's going. And that's funded from the 2022 operating budget.
that's just for information or do we need a we need a motion there it is Yeah, Deputy Reeve, for Yeah, it's a good fundraiser. We've gone every year. Uh, and I think the last time we just got two tickets and that was really it. So, uh, but yeah, it's good networking. You know, we work on the same trails. We supported them with a with a groomer as well in the past. So it's, uh, it's a good group. All right, would you like to make the motion? I could. Let's... Uh, this is number one. Let's do that. I don't, it doesn't come up on my screen here for yeah, some no, reason. Same here. Mr. Reeve, yes. uh, for this motion, we would like clarity as to who would be attending, if Correct. possible. Okay. You want a number like of bodies? It doesn't mean who. Um, prefer preferably names, just so that the tickets can be distributed as soon as they come in, um, if possible. But, okay, uh, who, at who least here, a is there any uh, staff that want to attend uh, after council says whoever wants to go? Yes, I'll, Deputy Reed. I'll go to my backyard. Yes. I'll, I'll take, I'll take okay. two tickets, and okay. then uh, okay. whoever wants to join me, then they can. Yeah, no, just for two people. I don't think we'll go as a table. I don't think... We have we haven't in the past, and uh, I think just for two tickets would be the way to go. Anybody else here would like to attend? Okay, let's Kay. for two two tickets then put that in and uh, for, uh, Deputy Reeve Fideo and his wife or somebody. or son or daughter or somebody somebody. Okay. <laughs> Good friend, Councillor Crick. Councillor Crick. I know. <laughs> Would you like to go? We can change it to four. Two tickets. All right. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Reeve Fideo for making a motion on behalf of Council. The Council approve attending the Coal Lake Snowmobile Club <coughs> Sleds and Threads event on November 12, 2022 to be held to be attended by Councillor Fideo at the cost of 150 to be funded by the 2022 operating budget. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. <coughs> Carried, thank you. On to 10, 10.1, or? Uh, thank you, Mr. Reeve, members of council. Uh, is the list of correspondence yes. received. Uh, I'd like to point out particularly the letter from the Iron River School. Uh, um, Reeve Kalinski, Councillor Slipchuk, Councillor Kreviak, and Councillor Swaggart, and myself attended the Iron River Playground Grand Opening. They have quite the, uh, they have quite the, uh, uh, the apparatus there for the kids to play on. And they have sent us a letter thanking us for our participation in that, uh, in that, uh, in that endeavor. Thank you. All right, I'll look. I'm looking for a motion, motion to approve all this. Yes, Councillor Scarson, you want any discussion? Yeah, I just have a question yep. on okay. the um, letter from the BRFA. So, is that they're asking for a letter back on Friday? Is that? That right uh, uh Reven council this was an odd situation we received a letter from chair kalinsky of the brfa uh who also is the reeve um and uh, asking me for clarity on a motion that was passed by council so i have drafted a letter for the deputy reeve signature because I don't write letters to elected officials, I write letters to administrators. Um, and so usually a letter to an elected official is signed by another elected official. Yeah. All right. Was that on our outgoing correspondence? I didn't know. I, the, the letter hasn't been signed yet. It's, uh, um, I think it's waiting um, uh, the deputy reeve signature and then a copy will get sent to council. It's just it's just indicating basically what the council motion was. We'll get that sent out to the rest of council right away. It, it was an odd situation, and Dereve and I have spoken about it. Um, Any other discussion or questions? Okay. Who would like to make a motion?
Okay. I'll make that. So I'm just sorry. sorry go ahead. I'm just curious on this. On this again. On this, there's, so there's three council members that sit on the BRFA board. Yes. And you still need a clarity on a motion that we made. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, whatever. I'll make the motion to accept this information. I guess. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Scarson, for making a motion on behalf of Council that Council accept the following correspondence of information from one to nine. Any discussion? Seeing that, I'll call for the vote. Carried. Council reports. Yeah, Deputy Reef. I'll start. Um, September 30th, we had a flag raising event at the City of Hull Lake, and, uh, and then also came out here for the Truth and Reconciliation event that they held in Bonneville uh, that evening. Uh, great, could we deal a little. Uh, little speech there and it was great it was a great event uh, yeah it was really enlightening and uh, the entertainment was really good and again there was a lot of uh, good conversation there yeah. well uh, not much since the last meeting because I think that I gave the CT report last time and uh, we haven't met with the library in a while but I, I think we're getting close to hiring a new um, manager there as well uh, so that will be something and then I guess the other thing is the um, Bonneville Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year Awards is on Friday this week, right? So I'm just a reminder. That's it. At FCSS meeting on uh, on the th Thursday, the 29th, and I guess uh, David Beal, the director, he's been there for 40 years. He's retiring effective December 9th. So I guess we'll give you a new director in Bonneville for the FCSS. And then uh, last night I had attended the BRFA open house here in town it was very well attended I got, got there a little bit later than it started at four to eight and I got there around six so it, a lot of people had already come through but I just think they had around a thousand people come through there so it's good good turnout oh. my turn sure okay also had a uh, a lodge meeting uh, there are 37 vacant rooms in the Bonnie Lodge and Colic combined uh, thanks for the letters from all councils requesting demolition of the old uh, lodge in Code Lake. Not sure when that's going to happen. And Minister Pond made a, a comment that she wants to sell most of the affordable housing units uh, over the next 10 years, either transfer ownership to another operator. Uh, she said it's not privatization, but we have to wait for more details to happen, especially after a new premier has been sworn in. Uh, yeah, I also attended the Iron River School Grand Opening. Uh, they have a very nice, closely knit uh, group of volunteers uh, uh, there in Iron River, in my old stomping grounds. And I attended the pre-budget council workshop, as you guys did, and I was there for the Bonneville Fire Prevention Open House. I was there before 4, and I left uh, a little before 5, so I missed you, Councillor Crick. <laughs> and that's all for me. Thank you. Yes, Deputy. So, uh, congrats to Mrs. Uh, Pons or Minister Pons' comments there. So, they don't want to privatize it, but they want to sell it off to a non government agency? I know it's sort of, uh, you know, uh, there's no more details. So, whenever there's more details, I'll let you guys know. So, with a new a premier, who knows what will happen with those things? Yeah. Thank you. And me. Uh, Mr. Hogan and myself uh, attended the Bonneville um, Regional High School, the new opening of the new building. I uh, didn't get a tour or anything, but I got to see the new gym, and, and then we had the grand opening in there. All the kids were in there. And it was very well attended and very well done. I was very impressed by the young lady. I think she's a grade 12 student. I can't remember her name, but they let her speak first, and then she got awarded the plaque from uh, RMLA. Mr. Hansen, and she was, I think she was in shock a little bit 
that uh, they gave her the plaque uh, on behalf of the, to the high school. So it's pretty cool. But she spoke very well, um, very impressed, and then uh, that gave us a chance for um, uh, Miss, Miss, Mr. Hogan and myself to talk to Mr. Hansen about this um, uh, thing with the Wolf Lake area. So we had a meeting with him the other day, and uh, my biggest take on that is that when he made a few phone calls, there wasn't too many people that knew about this. So it's really uh, even our people in leadership in the province really don't know a lot about this. So it's very shocking to uh, kind of hear that. So, uh, and then I also attended the Iron River School uh, with uh, Mr. Hogan and Mr. Slipchick and uh, Mr. Swaggart and Mr. Kraviak and myself. It was uh, very well attended by the kids and it was nice to be out in the open and see kids running around and screaming and having fun and there's a lot of support from the families there and uh, it was really good to see that it's going to be well used uh, this playground with uh, that community so very impressed so that's about it for me all right i guess that's it we're going to go into a closed session i'm looking for a motion to go into closed yes councillor craviac I'll, I'll call for the vote Okay, welcome back. That kind of concludes our meeting. I'm just looking for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Yeah, Councillor Scarson. I'll call for the vote, or can we do that just by a raise of hands? Yeah, I think we're all shut down. Okay, I'll just call for the vote, and I'll a raise of hands, please. Carried. Thank you.